good afternoon students in the last analog electronic circuits class we were discussing the gbp gain bandwidth product and then at the end we had discussed something called unit gain bandwidth so to have a recap of the same you can see here at a point where it is mentioned as ft let me change the color where it is mentioned as ft okay something is wrong i hope you are able to see this there is a blue color dot which i have put i don't know whether somebody is purposefully disturbing or whether it is done without a purpose i don't know whenever an extra class is scheduled sometimes there will be some mischievous or miscreant people who purposefully want to disturb finally what do they get out of it they also are not sure anyway they don't get anything except for a temporary sadism or temporary uh, negative ego satisfaction that's what i can say i hope that some day all the students will be mature enough that they are attending a teachers class anyway let me continue those who do not want to attend the class anyhow can always leave the meeting right yeah already one person has left the meeting yeah one more student has left the meeting good you can leave the meeting anyhow in the attendance form you will mark your presence so it is not necessary that you will have to stay in this meeting anyway instead of wasting time on unnecessary discussions let me continue you can see this particular point where i have marked in blue color and it reads an ft you already know that av equals 20 log of v not by vi and whenever v not equals vi v not by vi is unity and log of 1 is 0 so the voltage gain at that particular particular point will be zero so you can see here that uh, in the x axis the gain is becoming zero db or gain is becoming one exactly which means if at all the frequency is increased further then the gain is going to reduce further it is going to go below unity it amplifier is no more going to remain an amplifier it is going to become an attenuator from then on and there is no use of such circuitry at all so that is where amplifiers are characterized by means of a term called ugb unity gain bandwidth that is also called as this ft or transition frequency beyond which amplifier will not remain an amplifier so that was what we were discussing in the last class now let me proceed we had found out a uh, fh in two domains and we had also found out this ft also so this ugb is a figure of merit for the amplifier what do you mean by figure of merit figure, figure of merit means the uh particular mathematical figure by means of which anything can be characterized you already know about merit and merit can be expressed by means of numbers so that is how this ugb is a figure of merit for the amplifier means beyond this ugb the amplifier will not remain an amplifier that is where for ft or transition frequency or this unity gain bandwidth we had this particular expression okay let us proceed further now 
for some exercises on uh, this uh, high frequency response. So, let us see this exercise 4, find FHI, FHO, F beta and FT. I hope you already are remembering that FHI, FHO and F beta for which we had derived some equations in the previous classes. And even for FT also we had derived an expression. Now, FHI, FHO, F beta and FT for the circuit in exercise 2. Let me show you that exercise 2. Yeah, this was that exercise 2. With the exercise 1, source resistance 1 kilo ohms was given and this was that circuit. Okay, BJT is uh, voltage divider bias along with other values. Now, for all these values, additionally, the high frequencies characterization is done. Let me show you the present exercise now. It is for the exercise 2 given that CBE is 36 picofarad, CBC is 4 picofarad, CCE is 1 picofarad and CWI is 6 picofarad, CWO is 8 picofarad. Now we had equation for FHI, FHO, F beta and FT. Now FHI, let me show you the equation for FHI. FHI is 1 over 2 pi RTHI into CI where RTHI is RS in parallel with R1, parallel with R2, parallel with beta RE. Please show the diagram sir so that I can copy. Which diagram? The earlier circuit diagram. Okay, let me go there. But I will show only for a few minutes because I will have to continue that way. On this exercise only we had performed low frequency analysis along with the source resistance 1 kilo ohms also. So, this was the circuit. Okay, You can quickly write down this circuit for which we had already computed the low frequency response and uh, the value of Re that we had already calculated as 15.76 ohms. So, you can quickly note down. I hope you have noted down R1 and R2 are 40 kilo ohms and 10 kilo ohms, RC is 4 kilo ohms, RE is 2 kilo ohms. Then we have these capacitors 10 microfarad, 1 microfarad, 20 microfarad with 20 volts VCC. We have load resistance 2.2 kilo ohms. Along with that, we have that source resistance 1 kilo ohms also. Okay. Then I will proceed with the exercise. Yes, we are here now. So, for FHI, let me show you the formula once again. FHI, high frequency cutoff from the input side is 1 over 2 pi into RTHI in CI. THI is nothing but Thevenin's resistance at the input that is source resistance in parallel with R1, parallel with R2, parallel with beta into RE. Now, you already know the values 1 kilo ohms and 40 kilo ohms and 10 kilo ohms from the given uh, uh, circuit diagram. 
beta r e was also found out at that time and c i e c w i plus c b e plus 1 minus a b into c b c this is the miller capacitance counterpart at the input so remember this this equation again output side we have f h o that is 1 over 2 pi into r t h o into c o where r t h o is again r c parallel with r l parallel with small r naught and c o e c w o that means wiring capacitance at the output plus c c e plus 1 minus 1 by a v into c b c now for f beta we have this expression that is 1 over h f into mid by 1 over 2 pi into small r e into c b e plus c b c and finally for f t we have this expression that is 1 over 2 pi small r e into c b e plus c b c what is h f e mid nirmit is asking this question that means you were absent in the previous class right only when you become absent in the previous class. yesterday you did not understand okay if you did not understand again let me repeat in the mid frequency the gain is considered to be constant right in the frequency response you can see this mid frequency here in the mid frequency here mid range of the frequency gain is constant av is constant when av is constant we can take even beta as constant hfe as constant because it is not going to vary that is why this mid band region is called as uh, the mid band regions hfe or beta is referred as hfe mid that's all okay with that uh, reminder let me continue where was i yeah going back to this exercise yes this exercise so let us use all those equations the only way for you to remember the equations is to write down again and again and remember there is no other way here i can go back to those pages and i can show it to you but you will have to write down all these equations on your own and you will have to practice them and remember them that is the only way because even in the test we will have these questions exercises even in the exam we will these exercises we will have these exercises so substituting all the values 1 over 2 pi into 1k rs parallel with r1 parallel with r2 parallel with beta into r e and then adding all those capacitances you can see that 1 minus a v into what was the equation there 1 minus a v into that particular c b c so we are substituting all that 6 p plus 36 p that is all picofarad plus 91 into 4 picofarad it is 1 minus a v isn't it i hope so let me recall for f h i it is 1 minus a v into c b c correct so substituting all that value we will get this f h i as 690 kilohertz now finding out the f h o again 1 over 2 pi into 4 k parallel to 2.2 k r c parallel with r l here small r naught was not given in the exercise now adding all those capacitances with respect to wiring and the Miller's capacitance 1 minus 1 by a v you can see 1 minus 1 by a v corresponds to 1.911 into that capacitance c b c base 2 collector capacitance by adding all those capacitances we get the value 8.59 megahertz you can see f h i we got 690 kilohertz and f h o we got 8.59 megahertz there is a drastic difference here next f beta is 1 over 100 substituting the same values there 1 over hfa mid into all those values we get 2.52 megahertz then finally the ugb or ft is 252 megahertz now ft is only for a figure of merit of the amplifier whereas out of fhi fho and f beta we will have to consider which one is corresponding to the 
actual higher cut off frequency as i had mentioned in the case of low frequency analysis when we move from zero till the maximum gain whichever is the value which is nearer to the maximum gain or towards the 3 db cut off point that is going to be dominant whereas when we go to the high frequency analysis we are going down from the maximum gain towards zero so whichever is the point where it is going again towards minus 3 db point that is going to be dominant so in this case as fhi is having 690 kilohertz value later on this 2.52 megahertz is coming later on 8.59 megahertz is coming which means here the input side is dominant at the input side we have this base to collector capacitance counterpart remember we are dealing with the parasitic capacitances we are not dealing with the actual discrete capacitances that we are using in the circuit diagram we are dealing with the parasitic capacitances which are within the device between base to emitter base to collector or collector to emitter then wiring at the input and the output that is why we had derived the miller's capacitance formula now as 690 kilohertz is the least out of all the three after 690 2.52 megahertz is coming after that 8.59 megahertz is coming that means 690 kilohertz is occurring because of fhi that means the miller's counterpart of the base to collectors capacitance along with the base to emitter capacitance is more dominant because of which we have this 690 kilohertz as the bandwidth now we cannot consider 2.52 megahertz also we cannot consider 8.59 megahertz also now we should come to a conclusion that for the circuit diagram that is shown 690 kilohertz itself is the bandwidth now we have no other way to increase the bandwidth why because the device is already chosen the device's internal capacitance is affecting our high frequency behavior high frequency response the only way we can slightly reduce this effect of the input side is only the wiring capacitance that is at the input if that can be reduced then the 690 kilohertz can slightly rise up otherwise we have to consider the 690 kilohertz itself as the bandwidth of the amplifier okay now lastly ft is 250 megahertz this is this is found out only as a figure of merit you can see that 252 megahertz is much larger than 690 kilohertz or 2.52 megahertz or 8.59 megahertz means at 252 megahertz the frequency response touches the x-axis that means at 252 megahertz amplifiers gain is unity so we should take care that we cannot give any frequency beyond 252 megahertz to the amplifier itself otherwise output will be less than the input at that time that is why this 252 megahertz or the ft or the unity gain bandwidth is considered as the figure of merit for example for any device we will have absolute maximum rating for example let us say uh, your mobile phones maximum power consumption is 2 watt in fact when the maximum power consumption is 2 watt your mobile phone should be utilized at half the power if you keep on using your mobile phone at the maximum power consumption then its uh, uh, life will be reduced i had mentioned this in the previous classes also we generally choose any device for half of its maximum rating in the first module itself i had told this so similarly if this amplifiers unity gain bandwidth is 252 megahertz then we should not use this amplifier beyond 125 or 126 megahertz 252 megahertz half is 126 megahertz that means the amplifier should not be used beyond 126 megahertz that is the idea now you can see here the bandwidth is hardly 690 kilohertz even if you use it at 126 megahertz also you will not get a gain at all safe range for this amplifier to be used is only up to 690 kilohertz not more than that now you think you can think about it bjt 
amplifier is having a bandwidth of only 690 kilohertz whereas our mobile phone is right now working with the radio carrier frequency of 2.4 gigahertz or 2400 megahertz uh, whereas in this exercise we are discussing an amplifier circuit where its upper cut off frequency is 690 kilohertz only that is what i was telling you an amplifier design is a critical design in electronic systems or especially analog electronic systems or in any electronic communication system of course this exercise is for the given bjt circuit it is up to those design engineers to improvise upon the design so that they will somehow obtain larger bandwidth let me proceed now now this exercise indicates that input side's parasitic capacitance determines the value of upper cut off frequency or EFH that I had discussed not till now that is 690 kilohertz. Now let us have the exercise or the analysis for FET amplifier later on let us have an exercise. High frequency response of EFET amplifier now. You can see this FET also will have get to drain, get to source, drain to source capacitances and it will also have input wiring capacitance, output wiring capacitance. So it is similar to the BJT except that we have this signal sources resistance in series then here we are considering the fixed bias or the self bias circuit. Here in this example we have not considered the voltage divider bias. If the voltage divider bias is given you will have to simply substitute RG with R1 parallel with R2 that is all. Now this circuit is applicable even to the self bias why because from the source to the ground we will have a capacitance so always source can be directly connected to ground as far as AC analysis is concerned. Otherwise everything is the same we have the gate resistance for biasing then we have a drain resistance then we have the load resistance. Now we can write the AC equivalent model for the circuit in this manner. We can write it as R signal that is the internal resistance of the signal source that is in series with the, the gate resistance then we have the input capacitance CI. Now what is this CI? CI CWI plus CGS plus 1 minus AV into CGD you will have to recall that. CWI whenever capacitances are in parallel they are added when our resistances are in parallel it is 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. When our resistances are in series they are added whereas when our capacitances are in parallel they are added. So that way CWI is in parallel with CGS. Now we have one more parallel capacitance that is the Miller counterpart of CGD that is 1 more minus AV into CGD. So let me admit the student. So now the point is you can directly write the equation for CI as CI equals CWI plus CGS plus 1 minus AV into CGD. Similarly at the output you have GM into VGS as the current source then we have small RD that indicates the drain resistance of the FET then we have output capacitance that output capacitance CO is CWO the output wiring capacitance plus we have the CDS drain to source parasitic capacitance plus 1 minus 1 by AV into CGD because it is the Miller counterpart of the get to drain capacitance. So you can write the equation for CO as CWO plus CDS plus 1 minus 1 by AV into CGD. Especially in case of FET, we will not ignore the value of AV. Reason is, in case of FET, the voltage gain is really lesser. It is hardly 5 to 10. In BJT, we could have ignored. Still, in the exercise, we did not ignore even in the case of BJT. We had substituted the value of AV. Here, anyhow, we have to use the value of AV. So, let me proceed. Considering the input side now, we can write the equation for FHI as 1 over 2 pi 
into R sig parallel with R G. Why? Whenever we apply the Thevenin's equivalent, now the voltage source is going to be shorted. So R sig and R G will be in parallel. That is why we had written the equation as R T H I, the Thevenin's equivalent. So R sig parallel with R G into C W I plus C G S plus C M I. That is the Miller counterpart at the input. Considering the output side, F H O equals one over T two pi into R D parallel with R L parallel with small R D. Into C W O plus C D S plus C M O, the Miller's output counterpart. Now here we have C M I equals one minus A V into C G D and C M O equals one minus one by A V into C G D. This I had already mentioned with respect to this circuit diagram. So using this, let us have an exercise for E F E T. This is the last exercise in this PDF now. Later on, I have a small PPT where I will show you some other exercises quickly. Now, exercise five: Determine F H I and F H O for the circuit of exercise three. Given C G D equals two P F, C G S equals four P F, C D S equals point five P F, C W I equals five P F, C W equals six P F. Now, Nirmit may ask me once again to show the circuit diagram. Before he asks me, let him show the circuit diagram of exercise three. Yes, determine the lower cut off frequencies for this given. This one. This one needs that circuit diagram which I had already shown you now also. Only thing is. Because of the CF, CS, RS can be shorted. Otherwise, the values are given here. This is in exercise three. Given CG and CC and CS and RC, all those values are given here. You can always refer to this PDF. I will be putting this PDF in the Google Class instead of me waiting for you to note down all the values. I will put this PDF in the Google Class. You can refer to it. Let me proceed. To the last exercise there, with all these values. So here we have all these values given: CGD two PF, CGS four PF, CDS is point five PF, and wiring capacitances are given. Now let us substitute the values. FH equals one by two pi into ten K in parallel with one meg. That is uh, R sig in parallel with R G. Then adding all those capacitances, five pico plus four pico plus uh, one minus A V is three point nine nine seven. See, we cannot ignore A V at all in the case of F E T. Three point nine nine seven into two pico farad, we get around nine hundred and forty six kilohertz. Now, Calculating F H O one over two pi into four point seven k in parallel with two point two k. That is capital R D in parallel with R L. The small R D is not given here. Again, substituting the wiring capacitances along with one minus one by A V into two pico farad. That is the Miller's output counterpart. We get eleven point five eight megahertz. Again, in this exercise also, you can see that the input side is predominant. In general, in any active device, when we use it as an amplifier, it is the input side itself is going to be predominant for the high frequency response. Can anybody tell me why? Both in case of BJT, both in case of FET, it was the input side that was predominant where we got the lower frequency values, which is nearer to the maximum gain. Can anybody tell me why the input side itself is going to be predominant? In the case of low frequency response, I had mentioned that we can play with those external capacitance values. We can substitute different capacitance values so as to have a different low frequency response. But whereas in case of high frequency response, it is dependent on the internal capacitances of the device. So we cannot do much with this now. That is why manufacturers separately manufacture. Different types of active devices for high frequency. Low frequency transistor is different. High frequency transistor is different. 
there are special manufacturing processes for high frequency transistors so as to have lesser parasitic capacitance. Now my question is can anybody tell me why this input side itself is predominant? You can see that the input side parasitic capacity determines the upper cut of frequency as I have told. So any answer? Okay, the answer is with the Miller's counterpart. You can remember Miller's input counterpart is 1 minus AV into the parasitic capacitance between base and collector or gate and drain. Now output side it is 1 minus 1 by AV. That 1 by AV is always a lesser number. Whereas AV is a larger number. Even 1 minus AV is a larger number. 1 minus 1 by AV is a lesser number. That is how the output side Miller's counterpart is lesser value when compared to the input side. Naturally, it is the input side that is going to be predominant for the amplifiers as far as the high frequency response is concerned. Now, lastly, I have put a picture here so as to you to understand such that you will remember these diagrams always. Now, we have the source, signal source, then we have the Sources internal resistance indicated as RS. Now at the output of the amplifier we will have the load resistance. Always we will connect load with respect to ground. And always the signal sources internal resistance will be coming in series. Now how do we represent the input resistance and output resistance of the amplifier is the question. The question is whenever from the input side when you look into the amplifier let me annotate. When the signal is coming into the amplifier in this manner, always the signal is coming with respect to ground. So when it is looking into the amplifier, always with respect to ground, the signal is going to have all the particular impedance into effect. So always the input resistance is written in parallel. With respect to input, the input impedance or input resistance is written in parallel because that is with respect to ground because the signal itself was with respect to ground. Now why the output resistance is connected in series? For that the answer is always the load resistance is connected in parallel and if this R0 is not there the complete amplified output will come to the load. Now because of the internal resistance of the amplifier there will be some loss across the amplifier. Just like because of the internal resistance of the source, we are writing it in series. There will be some loss across this RS itself when the signal is passing through it. In the same way, when the amplified output is passing through the amplifier, amplifier's output resistance itself is going to obstruct to some extent the passage of the amplified signal. That is why R0 is always written in series. Ri is always written in parallel, even though physically they don't exist inside, right? Physically, Ri and R0 are not there because they are all parasitics which are inside the amplifier circuitry. But we will have to use this Ri and R0 in totality so as to obtain the characteristics of the amplifier. So please remember this particular diagram. And whenever required, you can recall this diagram throughout your life so as to visualize the amplifiers inside as well as amplifiers outside. So with this, I am ending this PDF. Now I will share one PPT where I will have some more exercises. Let me stop sharing the PDF and let me now share the PPT.
okay i had stopped earlier in this particular slide so that to be continued with chalk and talk that is when we discussed all the decibel gains and the human ears response later on we went on to discuss that particular pdf file even it was not chalk and talk it was uh, uh, write and talk i can say or it was pdf and talk i can say now let me continue with the powerpoint presentation it is a recap of whatever we have studied again but now this these are with reference to the other book called uh, electronic principles by malvino i am just putting some more slides here so that you will have a uh, remembrance of whatever we have discussed it is not different from whatever we have discussed till now it is only a summary in the powerpoint that's all so this was the voltage divider bias network where we had this uh, source resistance and the input capacitance all that is already there and we had already discussed this uh, uh, lower cut off frequency upper cut off frequency everything is already known to you by now so i'll be going a little quicker from now, now on now in a capacitor coupled amplifier it becomes necessary to obtain the theoretical values of the cut off frequencies before finalizing the amplifier design why because if at all you finalize your amplifier design just you start designing practically start testing without actually analyzing then you will be wasting a lot of time in finalizing the values it is always better that initially you will have an idea about what are the values you are going to get that is why we have more theory courses in the engineering and we will have less lab courses why it is the theorizing is more important in the beginning than actually doing hands on experiment without understanding any circuit diagram or without understanding any software program if you directly start doing it what will you learn how will you learn or how will you proceed for that purpose only now initially theorizing is required a lot later on you can have and so on of course people think that there should be more and more of hands on learning that is fine more and more of hands on learning is possible only if the basics or fundamentals are thorough otherwise suddenly if we give you a hands on experiment to conduct or suddenly if we give you one particular design to be implemented how will you implement that is why it becomes necessary to obtain the theoretical values of the cut off frequencies before finalizing the amplifier design so now for obtaining the lower cut off frequency it becomes necessary to find out the dominant capacitor for the decreasing frequency out of the three capacitors that means there is a decrease in frequency at the lower side here right you already know i have already discussed about this 3 db many times there are, we have three capacitors that also is seen now i will not repeat it again this is only a recap so that you will remember it again the more you see the more you hear the more you remember that is the point here now at the input side we have this model we have input resistance along with the input capacitance so we have f1 equals 1 over 2 pi rc where r equals rg plus r in at the output side we have this thevenin's equivalent then we have this collector resistance along with that we have a series capacitance then we have rl so again at the output side we have f1 equals 1 over 2 pi rc where r is rc plus rl in this case but at the emitter side we have this signal source at the base then we have that z out near the emitter and we have the emitter capacitance there inside the uh transistor you will have to visualize z out so f1 is 1 over 2 pi z out into ce whereas z out is that of the emitter follower but we already know that in case of emitter follower output impedance is really very less so that way for low frequency analysis it can be completely ignored that is what we did earlier when we did the low frequency analysis now let us have an exercise for obtaining for this particular circuit diagram 
you can see that there is a 1 millivolt input then 600 ohms is the source resistance 0.47 microfarad is the blocking capacitance 2.2 microfarad is the coupling capacitance then 10 microfarad is the bypass capacitance with 10 kilo ohm 2.2 kilo ohm as R1, R2, 3.6 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm as RC and RE and 10 kilo ohm as RL. Now for the input side using the same formula you do not have to uh, fear that I am showing something different. We had already done it earlier some other exercises I have put it in the PPT that is all. I thought I will share it with you so that you will become more familiar with these concepts. So for the input side let us substitute all that as per the earlier formula which we derived and then we have 1.78 kilo ohms as R so F1 is around 190 hertz. Now for the output side we have R equals 13.6 kilo ohms so we have F1 equals 5.32 hertz. Now for the emitter side it is F1 equals 635 hertz. Now out of these three which one is dominant? Which one is having the highest frequency that is dominant? 190 comes first, 635 comes next, right? 5.32 comes before that. So 5.32 hertz, then 190 hertz, then 635 hertz. Even in this particular example also, it is the emitter side that is predominant. You can see even in the, our earlier exercises for low frequency response also, we saw that the emitter side itself was predominant. Here also we are seeing the emitter side itself as predominant. So from the mid band when we move to the lower frequency side the emitter bypass circuit has the larger value. When we move from the mid band to the lower side that is towards the 3 dB cutoff point that 635 hertz is larger value hence 635 hertz is the lower cutoff frequency. Now for obtaining the upper cutoff frequency for the FH side. At the collector side we have this CC dash in Malvino he uses this particular notation. You will have to follow the earlier notation only that means in PDF whatever notation I have used you will have to follow that notation only because our main textbook is boil start itself. But I am showing you Malvino's notation also so that you will become more familiar that is all. Otherwise you will have to always follow the notation which is used by the textbook boil start and the same notation I had used in the PDF notes. So here CC dash is between collector and base and C to stray is the wiring capacitance. The wiring capacitance also called as a stray capacitance. What is the meaning of stray? Stray means something that can be ignored in the general sense or something that is of lesser value. So C stray corresponds to the wiring capacitance. We had that CW I and CW O there. So this is at the collector side. So F2 is 1 over 2 pi RC where R is RC parallel with RL and C is CC dash plus C stray that we have seen earlier. Now at the base side we have the small RG equals capital RG parallel with R1 and R2 that RG is the uh, resistance of the signal source. Now CC dash needs to be converted into its Miller components that we have seen already. CE dash is between base and emitter. Now with respect to that, CBE is 1 over 2 pi FT into RE dash where FT is AI into bandwidth. AI, I discussed about this FT already that is UGB, unity gain bandwidth. So AI into bandwidth, the current gain into bandwidth can also be considered as the transition frequency. So we had found out FHI, FHO and F beta there. Okay. Here this CBE can also be modeled using unity gain bandwidth and RE dash. Of course, I will not go into too much detail here because for us the reference book is boil start itself. Whatever I discussed in the PDF that if you follow and study that is enough. I am showing this PPT only for a value addition.
I keep repeating the same until you get bored. Okay. Let me go further. Now for the exercise for obtaining F2, we have this uh, another circuit now. And here for the base side given is CC dash 2.1 picofarad, FT is 300 megahertz. We will substitute all those values. C in Miller, we have got 248 picofarad. C dash, we have got 23.4 picofarad. Substituting that value, or substituting the formula 1 over 2 pi RC. So the total capacitance is 271 picofarad. Now substituting for the R, we get 397 ohms. Now for the collector side, C stray is given is 10 picofarad. The Miller's capacitance is obtained here, that is 2.1 picofarad. And C is 2.1 picofarad plus 10 picofarad is 12.1 picofarad. R is RC parallel to RL is 2.65 kilo ohms. Now using all these R and C, we obtain, for the base side we obtain F2 equals 1.48 megahertz. For the collector side we obtain F2 equals 